Want to write a server in C for the Commodore Amiga, but don't know where to start? This video's got you covered. Come on, let's get our paws dirty and write some code. Servers and clients use things called sockets to connect to each other. Sockets are the building blocks of modern network code, and BSD sockets are the type of sockets we get on the Amiga. When you start up tools like AMI TCP, Miami, or Roadshow, they provide a BSD socket library called a uh, BSD socket.library that we can use to communicate. Like any other Amiga library, we have to open the BSD socket library. Once it's open, we create a new socket. We get back a number to represent that new socket, and when we refer to our socket, we do so by that number. In order for others to connect to our socket, we have to bind that socket to an address and port on the machine. The address can be one or all of the network interfaces on the computer. The port is a number from 0 to 65,535, though only special programs can use ports below 1024. Once the socket is bound, we have it listened for connections. If another socket connects to our listening socket, we can accept that connection and start reading and writing data from and to that external socket. In order to write code that uses bsdsocket.library, we need to get the development headers necessary for our C compiler to build the executable correctly. The easiest source for these headers is the AMI TCP Software Development Kit, version 4.3. I'm going to assume you already have the Amiga Native Development Kit header set up in your development environment. To get set up for socket programming, you'll need to do the following. Copy the netinclude and netlib folders to the same place where you have your other include and lib folders in the NDK. Add the netinclude folder to the existing include assign path. Since I'm using SASC, that'll look like this. You can also make a net include assign too. If this is set up correctly, you'll be able to write a small program like this one to open and close a socket successfully. Now, let's write a server. Our server is going to be very simple. It'll open a port on all network interfaces and wait for a connection from a remote client. Once it receives a connection, it'll keep printing to the screen whatever data it sent until the remote client disconnects. Then, it'll close the port and shut down the server. The source code for the server is linked to in the video's description. Grab the code and follow along. I've also linked to some of the, uh, better documentation I could find while I was building this code. Like many Amiga programs, we'll have some housekeeping to do before and after our actual network code. I use a setup teardown approach for this housekeeping, so I don't have to deal with deeply nested if statements. First, we need to open the BSD socket library. We want version 4 or above, which all modern Amiga internet connectivity tools should provide. We'll create and populate the socket base variable with the base of the library, which the protos functions use to access the library automatically. We'll also need to create and tear down the socket we'll use for our server. We'll get to the set socket opt part in a bit. Normally, our program should exit on its own once the client disconnects, but we'll need to handle the possibility that the server runner hits control C to stop the server before that. Since I'm using SASC, a control C handler is inserted into our code by default which will immediately kill the program once invoked. Because we're running a server, this is not what we want. We have to tell SESC via the linker options that we don't want its control C handling and that we'll handle it ourselves. The exec and BSD socket libraries will help us out with this later. Once we've done setup, next is starting the server. We create a struct, which lets us define our binding requirements, all network interfaces, port 8090, and then tells the socket to start listening for connections. Notice the H2NS and H2NL in here? These help with writing portable network code. They smooth out differences between the endianness of the processors that are communicating. The endianness of the processor determines the order by which multibyte values are read. What this comes down to is, if you're writing network code, the numbers you send the sockets and such all have to be in the same big endian style, and H2NS and H2NL do just that. Now our server is waiting for connections, and I mean, it's waiting. It's not looping or polling, it's simply waiting. It's also waiting for us to potentially hit control C in the console. Wait select is a combo of two things, the Amiga exec wait function and the BSD socket library's select function. Wait, um, waits for a signal to be sent to our program. We have to specify what signals we want to wait on and while we're waiting, our code will do absolutely nothing. This short snippet of code here, when run in the console, will wait for us to hit control C. Once we do, the program will continue, then finally exit. Select takes lists of socket numbers and waits for those sockets to be ready for reading or writing, or if there's some sort of error. Once one or more of them are ready, those lists are modified and you look through what remains in the lists and act on them accordingly. Wait select combines the two. So we'll either stop waiting if a signal comes in or if a socket has become interesting. 
Right now, our server only has one socket, so we're going to skip checking those lists. If the user hits Ctrl-C while we're wait selecting, or some other error happens, wait select will return minus one, so we'll use it as a guide to exit the code early. If it doesn't return minus one, we know our server socket had someone trying to connect. We can now accept that connection and capture their details at another socket struct, and we can print out their IP address as well. Now, let's read some data from the client. The netcat command on the other machine sends along a short phrase before disconnecting. Read data loads data from the client socket via receive into a buffer of characters. Receive returns how many characters were read. If we read in exactly that buffer size and characters, we know there's more to read. Otherwise, we've read everything or had a communication error. We'll print out the data as we receive it. When we're done, we'll tear down the socket and library and exit. A note about receive. Some non-Amiga BSD socket tutorials might use read instead. Don't be fooled. You need to use receive on the Amiga. This also goes for some of the other strangely capitalized BSD socket library functions like inet n 2 a Remember that set sock opt from earlier? When you close a socket that was bound and listening, the network library doesn't let you reuse that socket's network interface and port for another server right away. While you're waiting until the time you can use it again, that old socket is in the appropriately named time await state. BSD socket that library will clean it up eventually. In our simple case, we can be a little more aggressive with reusing the interface and port and with how we close the socket to make that cleanup happen quicker. We can use set sock opt to enable the SO reuse adder feature. This allows us to bypass time wait when binding the socket. We can also use shutdown when we're closing the socket to be extra sure all communication is ended. So there you go, a very basic network server written using the BSD socket library in C on the Amiga. Now, Go forth and make some cool Amiga servers.